He's interesting, boys. Uh, one of our very close colleagues here at Fox, Gary Green, a great Arsenal supporter. Yes, sir, the old Just gooners. like uh, our audio man, Phil Yeoman, here tonight, another great Arsenal supporter, but uh, the big chap, Gary Green, is there with uh, former employee here, Hugh Jenkins, who, of course, is a big Fulham fan, so they'll be going lickety-split in the stands, <laughs> and uh, we'll be doing similar here, I hope. Well, uh, it won't luck. be quite the same, but anyway. Well, it won't be quite the same, because <laughs> they're watching the game at a normal hour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, it should be a beauty at Highbury. Let's get across now to our commentators there are the key gunners calling this one our first in a big live triple header on Boxing Day night, Bill Leslie and Trevor Francis. With Ashley Cole suspended, Gail Clichy fits in at left back. Freddie Jumberg's back after missing a couple of games with migraines, as is Fest Cesc Fabregas. The young Spaniard returns to midfield following a rest against Portsmouth. Dennis Bergkamp also returns to renew his partnership up front with Thierry Henry. Chris Garman knows he's not afraid to make tough decisions. Both Steed Malbronk and Sylvain Legwinski are dropped to the bench as the Fulham boss makes four changes to the side beaten by Charlton on Monday. Moritz Voltz is also back. He returns to face his former club. And Thomas Radzinski is restored to the starting 11 as Brian McBride makes way. Well, Fulham have a wretched record against Arsenal in the Premiership. They've never tasted victory over their North London rivals, but came here last season and gave a real stern performance. They frustrated Arsenal. Edwin van der Sar was outstanding that day, and uh, the nil-nil resulting draw saw Fulham pick up the only point they ever have in the Premiership against Arsenal. Well, it's going to have you sense to be more of the same here this afternoon if they are going to get anything and by the starting lineup and the way that they appear to be lining up. 4-3-3 you could call it, but 4-5-1, like Trevor was saying, it will be a formation that is set out to be hard to break down. There's a confrontation in the middle of the park, Bill, that I'm looking forward to. Two huge men, Vieira for Arsenal and Diop for Fulham. Both of them 6'3", six 6'4". Huge figures. Diop especially is a very, very strong physical player. Reading Arsene Wenger's notes in the programme just prior to the game, he's talking about Vieira coming back to his best. He's looked much better in training. And that will be a massive boost for Arsenal because I think it's, it's been this season uh, a checkered start, really, I think, for Patrick Vieira. Not at his best, but if he is coming back to his best... Well, then that's great news for all Arsenal fans. Especially at this time of year as well. That's just one of the problems that Chris Coleman has to contend with this afternoon. It'll be Arsenal, the reigning champions, to get us off and underway. After this afternoon's game, officiated by Barry Knight, we will be at the halfway point of the Barclays Premiership season. It's then that the race starts in earnest. The champions kick off their hectic Christmas programme. This time last year they were also in second place at Christmas time. One point then behind Manchester United. This time it's Chelsea who set the pace. At every point vital between now and May. First touch for Bouba Diop. A colossus is how Arsene Wenger described him in the programme today. Errant touch from Carlos Bocanegra, the young American. Fabregas. The young Spaniard restored to the heart of the Arsenal midfield alongside Vieira. Campbell, goal-scoring hero, last time out at Fratton Park. Now Pires. On to Fabregas. Here's Clichy. And it's away by Ian Pierce. Well, the way Cliche plays isn't too dissimilar, is he, to Ashley Cole? Loves to get forward on that left hand side, got himself into a good attacking position there, but the cross wasn't the best. Here's Pires. Goes to ground under the challenge of Pembridge. Collins John. 
Just a word about the way the two teams have lined up, as we anticipated Arsenal in their normal formation, 4-4, 1-1, Bergkamp being the second striker playing off Thierry Henry. And as I anticipated, Fulham, it's, it's, it's more like a 4-5-1 with the two wide players on the left-hand side, Razinski, on the right-hand side, Collins-John, with uh, Andrew Cole being the lone striker. Van der Sar, the hero here last season as he kept a rampant Arsenal at bay to get a point in that goalless draw. And away by Sol Campbell. The East Stand bathed in winter sunshine this Boxing Day. Volts always with a point to prove against the club that considered it. he had no future here. Diop's cross. Lanced on by Cole, another former Arsenal man, Radzinski. This is now Carlos Bocanegra, dug out by Pembridge to his captain Cole. The return to Pembridge, and it's away for a Fulham corner. Good build-up play that by Fulham. Good ball into the feet of Andy Cole, who did well to hold it up. Pembridge went for the return, but he was well trapped by Patra Vieira. Just got his foot in time to prevent the shot coming in from Pembridge, but in doing so, he's given away a corner. And the old set-piece situation from which Arsenal have been vulnerable of late, the first test for them. Played short to Cole. Drilled straight into the side netting, though, by Andy Cole. Well, that was an absolute waste, wasn't it, by Fulham? Surprisingly, Pembridge was allowed to play the ball short to Cole, who was in plenty of space. But the end product really lacked any sort of conviction. Tries to get onto his left foot, doesn't make himself enough of an angle to get the cross in. It doesn't trouble the Arsenal back four. Seven years since he last scored at Highbury, Andy Cole, in the colours of Manchester United. Radzinski denied by the official's flag as we look to break forward. Thomas Radzinski, who famously scored for Everton in the run in the game rather that ended an unbeaten run of Arsenal more famously though the second goal came from the boot of Wayne Rooney here's Pires now Thierry Henry crowded out by two or three Fulham players Lauren is first to react and then he finds Carlos Bocanegra Cole the foul is by Colo Torre Bridges free kick. Easily gathered by Manuel Almunia, his fourth consecutive Premiership start, the Spaniard. Jens Lehmann again looks on from the sidelines. Well, it's been well documented this season that Arsenal have had a problem dealing with set pieces. Fulham have uh, had two up to now, a corner and a free kick there from Pem Pembridge, which I have to say have been totally wasted. Fulham tasted defeat in that last London derby on Monday against Chelten. It ended another mini revival. It's been the story of their season. Patches of very poor form and then hints that things are going to get better. And then more disappointment. Consistency is the buzzword as far as Fulham are concerned. And they've been unable to find much of that so far this campaign. That's exactly why they find themselves down at the wrong end of the table. And the first real tie this afternoon that Uber Diop and Vieira Lockhorns, and it's the Frenchman who fouls the Senegalese international. Cole looked to stab it through to Radzinski. Lauren, though, for Arsenal, now Pires. There's pace to this attack, Bergkamp. And just sped away from the Dutchman, through to his compatriot, Edwin van der Sar. Yes, it was a good idea, unfortunately. It was the wrong striker chasing after that. I think it would have been Henri then obviously it would have been a better ball. Arsenal's home record is a good one, one of three sides in the Barclays Premiership this season that are protecting unbeaten home records. Bocanegra. 
Vieira sticks out a leg and Torre can clear. They certainly haven't settled into their stride yet, Arsenal. And it's Fulham who spend more time than their opponents half, if anything. And it's a second corner kick for the side from West London. And they make more than they did of the first one. In the first seven minutes of the game. Pembridge's corner. Dealt with altogether convincingly, and Fulham have some real height in their attack with Zap Knight and Diot. But Arsenal always have the capability to break quickly. Fabregas, Bergkamp, Vieira. They'll be on Pembridge and Pires, who cushions it beautifully into his captain's stride. Vieira to take on Bouba Diop again. And the move broke down because Diop proved a considerable barrier for the Arsenal captain. It was interesting that wasn't it because Vieira I think was taken by surprise that uh, Diop matched him stride for stride. Pires into Ljungberg. Just crowded out by Pierce and also Zesh Raymond. Now it's Arsenal on the front foot and the home side have the corner. Yes, yeah, surprisingly Fulham have made the better start. It's the first opportunity for Arsenal to put a little bit of pressure on the Fulham defence. Henry's corner, played powerfully by the Welshman Mark Pembridge. And I talked earlier about Arsenal's good home form, but they have only won one of their last four here. It was against Birmingham City, a convincing win. Bergkamp, straight to Zat Knight. Pembridge now. Colt. And support is Boubidi up away from Fabregas. And look to feed it into the path of Andy Kelt. There was too much on it. And Almunia able to find Clichy now. And in turn picks out Pires. Henri for Clichy. Walks across to smother the danger. Henri. Harry Knight almost got in the way, but Henri sees Burkamp. So too does Zesh Raymond. Toure, Vieira, beyond one and two. Brilliant by Patrick Vieira. Henri has set off on a run. Went for the back heel, but for once, the majestic skill of Thierry Henri deserted him. Great feat this by Vieira, gets away from Raymond, spots the run of Henri. Henri, on this occasion, really needed just to hold the ball up. He had good support from a wide area from Lauren, but tried to be a little bit too clever and lost possession. Thierry Henri, who knows if he gets on the score sheet today, he will equal the league goal scoring record of one Ian Wright. 128th it would be for Thierry Henry in the league. Lauren. Fabregas. Bergkamp now. Into Henry. Arsenal starting to find their feet in this match. Lauren. Blocked away by Zat Knight. Bocanegra can only fire it off Jumberg away for a throw. now has he shown too much to vaults well it looked like he had but he's got the bounce of the ball Pires and van der Sar foils the Frenchman well Pires was looking to get his shot in there because he'd overrun the ball it fell to vaults who really should have put his foot through it it's a very very weak challenge gave Pires the opportunity to get the shot away but it was a comfortable save for van der Sar 
Pires. This is Ljungberg. Dion Knight and to Thierry Henry. Henry for Arsenal. Oh, brilliant. Oh, wonderful. Thierry Henry for Arsenal. And he's now level with the great Ian Wright in terms of league goals. And Arsenal have the lead by one goal to nil. What a wonderful goal this is for Henry. Jumbo plays his part. Henry just down the side. Looks like he's going to hit it with his left foot. Pierce goes to ground. Henry back onto his right foot and just slides it past Van der Sar. So calm, Henry. Onto his right foot. The goal opens up. Still got a lot to do. But he takes it so easily, slots it past Van der Sar's left hand side into the opposite corner. Thierry Henry at his best. His 16th Premiership goal of the season in his 19th game. The top scorer in the league has done it again for Arsenal. The flag has stayed down against Gael Clichy. Henry decided not to, to uh, make the run. Here he is now, Henri. Just ran out of pitch and touched it behind for a goal kick. And he looks in the mood today, Thierry Henri. Well, this is the goal. Pierce thinks he's going to hit it with his left foot. Goes to ground, trying to get the block in. Henri knew exactly what he wanted to do. Back onto his right foot, in all the goal at his mercy. One against one with Van der Sar, just slots it in with ease. Doesn't hit it with any power. It's a little side foot into the opposite corner of the net. A terrific goal. Here's Cole to take on Toure. Certainly troubled the Arsenal defender. Well, Arsenal have shored up at the back of late since Almunia has come into the side, in fact. Uh, two clean sheets in their last three league games. But they have leaked many more goals than they did last season. 22 so far this campaign, compared to 26 the whole of last season. Diop causing problems against Vieira, but it came off the Fulham man last. wonder if we'll see another spectacular from Bouba Diop. When he scores, they are absolute crackers. Just as we saw against Chelsea and also against Manchester United. Both at Craven Cottage, though. He's yet to open his Fulham account away from home. Jungberg. On both sides with injury problems coming into this game. Jose Antonio Reyes, Edu Gilberto still sidelined. Jermaine Tennant has been out with a hamstring injury for Arsenal, but is on the bench this afternoon. Disappointment for Fulham that Luis Bermorte was unable to return. Of course, the long-term absentees, Lee Clark and Alain Goma, Klaus Jensen as well. Mark Crossley to all unavailable this afternoon. Vieira, they're ahead of Pembridge, has turned back into the challenge of Mark Pembridge, though, so Fulham able to clear. This is just the start that Chris Coleman would not have wanted. I was thinking exactly the same. He set his team out with the two wide players, instructed to try and stop the two full-backs, Lauren and Cliche, from getting forward. They haven't managed that. It's natural instinct for those two to get forward. Wonderful touch by Fabregas into Henri. Back to Fabregas. Uh, intricate work in the end. Perhaps a little too intricate from Arsenal. Just continuing from what I was saying, you know, you can make your best laid plans, but when you've got a player like Henri, how do you stop him? You know, he's done it on so many occasions for Arsenal. He really is a sensational player. And I agree with Arsene Wenger. I was really surprised that he wasn't voted player of the uh, World Player of the Year this year. I don't know what he's quite going to do to achieve that award. Here's Radzinski. Vieira 
just eats up the ground and has conceded a corner kick, which Fulham will look to benefit from. Thierry Henry, second in the last two World Players of the Year. Well, Radzinski went past Vieira, but having done so, he really should have delivered the ball much earlier. He tried to compose himself, had a good look in the box, but that just gave the opportunity for Vieira, Vieira to get back and get a block in as the cross was about to come in from Radzinski. Corner kick number three for Fulham. None of them so far have really tested the Arsenal defence, but they'll get another chance as Henri puts it behind. As you mentioned, Bill, there's plenty of size in there. Ian Pearce, Zat Knight, Hollins John, another over six foot. All await the delivery from Pembridge. Look to lose everyone and finds Dennis Burkamp. Fabregas has set off on a run, as has Pires and Thierry Henry. And once Arsenal not altogether clinical on their counter attack. Here's Boca Negra for Fulham. Pembridge. The interception came from Colo Torre. Now Pires. Campbell. Tries to shoot from the. Arsenal crowd as Campbell moved over the halfway line with the ball. Here's Ljungberg, clipped by Boca Negra. I think with more and more teams now playing this system, leaving just the one striker upfield, it's absolutely imperative that uh, the two central defenders for Arsenal, Torre and Campbell, they've got to make themselves available and they've got to be prepared to go forward with the ball when in possession. Because as I said before, what Fulham are trying to do is the block off the avenues in wide areas, stopping the full from getting forward. So it's absolutely imperative that the two central defenders, they have plenty of possession and they're willing to receive the ball. Here's Fabregas, benefiting from the rest he got last week, left out of the side against Portsmouth. Flamini, who replaced him on that day, was uh, among the Arsenal substitutes today. Laurent to Bergkamp. Raymond across on the cover. The role that Zesh Raymond is playing for Fulham this afternoon is just in front of the back four, but almost as a third centre-half. I think the thinking behind that is for Raymond to try and do a defensive job, protecting the two central defenders, but also trying to pick up Henri. He flicks it beautifully, nearly into the path of Pires. Van der Sar was flummoxed, but Zat Knight had the composure to keep his eye on the ball and clear. That theory would be fine, Bill, if Henri played as a central striker, but he tends to play most of the time on the left wing. Morgan van der Sar operates a safety-first policy. Not sure that that's necessarily where he meant his clearance to go. Back as first-choice keeper again, Edwin van der Sar. And a contract, of course, at Fulham in the summer. Here's Vieira. Pires has made the run. Vieira shoots himself. Locked away by Zat Knight. Radzinski. Lauren to Jungberg now. There's space for Freddy Jungberg. The support is wide from Lauren. Lost away by Bolts. But here's Henri. Right to drill one towards Edwin van der Sar. And Arsenal have the corner. Well, they didn't deal with that cross very well, I'm afraid, uh, there, Fulham. Lauren tried to play the ball to the far post, straight to Bolts, whose header really lacked any sort of power, didn't get any distance, and it fell to uh, Henri, who was quick to get under control, trying to get the shot in. Pires. Home of Fabregas, back to Bolts. Henri is first to react. Bergkamp now. Back to Henri. Thierry Henri. Made it off Boca Negra. Bergkamp now. Fabregas. Colo Torre just set up on his run a little bit too late. But Henri again looking irresistible with his touch today.
a sloppy play from Fulham. Under no pressures that night, played a bad ball to Pierce. And here's Pires looking for Ljungberg. It's almost like Fulham altogether comfortable with the defensive setup they've been asked to do today. Arsenal able. I know they have the skill and the wonderful forward player, the likes of Pires, Ljungberg, and Henri. But it's just been a little bit too easy for them at times to break through the rear guard. As Vieira finds Bergkamp. Pires. Ljungberg. Fabregas. Clichy. Pires. Henri. Flip towards Bergkamp. No offside. Bergkamp's kept it in. Clichy. Wonderful period of possession this by the champions. There's the kiss of death to it. Just past the halfway point of this first half, and it's Thierry Henry's 178th Premiership goal for Arsenal. And it separates the sides. Diop. Pires caught late by Diop. Quite a bad challenge that from Diop. I'm surprised that. Uh, Barry Knight allows this to go by without taking out a yellow card. That was knee high. Well, should he pick up a booking today? Papa Bubidi up. He will face a suspension. It will be his fifth yellow card of the campaign so far. Raymond's header. Forward by Volts. Arsenal have this wonderful record in London derbies should they avoid defeat this afternoon and it will be their 30th consecutive London derby without defeat stretching back over three years now as Jungberg to thread it through to Henri Fabregas the second wave of Arsenal attack now Lauren locked away by Bocanegra Jungberg in a lot of space. Close though by Zat Knight. Lawrence Cross is inviting for Torre, who flung himself towards the ball, but unfortunately for him, Zat Knight had got in the way. That's a way for an Arsenal throw down in this corner. Well, you feel the two players are getting most of the ball in the Arsenal team are the two fullbacks, Lauren and Cliche. That shouldn't be the, the case, you know, because Fulham. We've employed tactics to try and prevent that happening. But the two wide players who are natural attacking players don't relish the defensive side of the game, and they really aren't doing their job at the moment. Pires with this corner for Arsenal. He looks deep, dealt with by Raymond. Only as far as Bergkamp. Bergkamp looks to pick out the run of Fabregas. Well away by Boca Negra. Volts. Goes by Ljungberg. And after a promising start by Fulham in the first five minutes or so of the game, they've been unable really to get enough possession to muster any meaningful attacks. It's the one attempt on goal so far when Andy Cole fired into the side netting. It was Henri looking for another for Arsenal, but Knight is there to clear. Finds Clichy. Arsenal will try down their left now. Clichy on the overlap. Is in by Robert Pires. But Van der Sar was there to thwart Vieira. It's almost a good spot from Pires. Great forward run that from Vieira. He was tracked, but the uh, tracking came a little late from Diop. This game, Arsene Wenger challenging his captain to raise his game to the standards 
that uh, Arsenal fans and football fans in general have come to expect from the uh, Frenchman. By his own standards, it hasn't been the best of uh, opening halves of the season. But uh, if he hits form, I just sense that he'll carry Arsenal with him. And uh, if that is the case, then certainly it'll be very hard to stop them retaining their title. It's an intriguing championship battle in prospect between Arsenal, Chelsea and uh, whoever else. But it's those two in the pole positions at the moment. Here's Pires. Another corner for Arsenal. Vieira. Oh, it bounced up awkwardly for Edwin van der Sar. And Fabregas over eager as he looked to get beyond Boca Negra. Yes, Vieira was released from a well-worked short corner. Henri plays it to Vieira, under control. The shot just bounces in front of van der Sar, which makes it really difficult for him. But he gets a good hand to it. In fact, he got both hands to it and forced it away from the danger area. Well, he's got two goals so far this season, Patrick Vieira. They've, they've come in the last five games. Burkamp. Pierce. Pembridge with to find Radzinski. But in cutting it out, Lauren's given Arsenal an excellent platform from which to attack. Pires. Again, cliche in support. Pires again. Was one thing that was noticeable about noticeable rather about Arsenal's run last season. But, uh, when players were out injured or suspended, they had like for likes that could come in and perform at a similar standard. And certainly Clichy and the role he plays in attacking terms down Arsenal's left flank is exactly the same job as Ashley Cole. Last time, of course, against Portsmouth, they operated uh, together down the left side with Cole at fullback and Clichy in midfield. Burkamp cannily wins a corner kick. Clever play that from Dennis Burkamp, showing his vast experience for any youngster watching. That's a good way of winning a corner for your team. Just make it sure that the ball cannons off the uh, opposing player. He knew exactly what he was doing. It's Henry's corner, chipped but straight down the throat of Edwin van der Sar. The Dutchman who was at Juventus with Thierry Henry, the man who has scored the only goal of the game past him this afternoon. We're into the last quarter of an hour of this first half. Vieira, again, wonderfully composed in the heart of midfield, with Diop snapping at his heels. Eventually Diop gets the better of Pires, here is again Diop. Raymond has given it straight to Thierry Henry, a very dangerous thing to do. Burkamp goes low to Ljungberg for the first time shot, but that was good defending by Zat Knight. Great pick out, wasn't it, from Dennis Burkamp? Knew exactly where Ljungberg was. Ljungberg knew exactly where the goal was. But it was a good block from Zat Knight. Fabregas, Ljungberg now. Pierce. He hasn't cleared the danger yet. This is the shot from Jungberg on the swivel, knew exactly where the goal was, but a brilliant block from Zat Knight. Here's Radzinski now, cuts it back. Fortunately for Arsenal, and unfortunately for Fulham, the only person in that area was uh, Vieira, but that was a good opportunity for Fulham. Vieira now. Lauren. 
Jungberg. Fabregas. This is Pires. Bergkamp. Locked by Volts. Vieira. Well, he seemed to slide into the challenge rather than, than there being any bad intent in it, but uh, the free kick is awarded against the Arsenal captain. I think Vieira's unlucky here because he actually reads the intentions of Collins John. Knew exactly what he was going to do, he turned into him, but Vieira just applied a little bit too much bodily contact on John. And as a result of that, Barry Knight awards a free kick for Fulham. Raymond. Pressurised by Burkamp. Hello, Torek, commanding in the air, and frustration must be creeping in for Andy Cole. He's uh, really struggled to see anything of the ball so far. Yes, on that occasion, uh, he didn't make a fair attempt at trying to head that ball. He actually put himself into Torre. As a result of that, gave away a free kick. Controversy, of course, the last time that the, these two teams met in September at Craven Cottage. Fulham felt that they should have had something out of that game, although the scoreline would suggest otherwise at 3-0. Had a goal by Collins John, disallowed. And, of course, a penalty decision controversially overturned. Arsenal went on and with a second-half display. Dispatch Fulham, Zach Knight scoring an own goal. And Reyes and Jungberg amongst the scorers. Here's today's man who's been on target, Thierry Henry. Yishi. Campbell. Fabregas. Perez. Thierry Henry still got the touch to Fabregas. And very nearly managed to find the way through beyond Zach Knight to the run of Jungberg. It wasn't to be. Some of the passing from Arsenal in this first half has been uh, really crisp, showing some good movement, which helps to uh, make the passing so much better if you've got good movement, enables the player in possession to have more than one alternative. But I do think that Fulham have made it too easy for Arsenal. We come again now, Pires, Jungberg. He's fell over his own feet. Raymond carries clear, but Fabregas is there. Was he caught by Pembridge? He was. Well, the first challenge was a reasonable one, but the second one definitely caught the young Spaniard. Here comes Sol Campbell. Through the gears, still on what strength. So nearly able to feed it for Ljungberg, but there were four Fulham defenders blocking the way. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The easy goes past players, as if they stood still. He really has got unbelievable pace. Here's Lauren. Diop. Five Arsenal defenders around, and just Andy Cole really to try and pick out. Later joined by Collins John, but the odds were always against Fulham keeping that move going. Almost the first touch of the ball that El Munia has had in this first half. Clearly would have preferred it to be a slightly more assured one than that. Here's Diop. Bergkamp now. Oh, 
Well, it's not the first time that uh, Dennis Bergkamp's touch has not been uh, as we come to expect. Pembridge. There's Thomas Radzinski. Cole. The strength of Tour 8 was too much for Cole there. This was that of Boca Negra against Ljungberg. Cole. It's a great ball into the path of Boca Negra. But there's too much on it for Colin Sean. There have been one or two occasions when uh, done this left hand side, Boca Negra and Radzinski have combined quite well together. It's not the first time they've got in behind Lauren. On the opposite side, well, as an attacking force, Fulham have been absolutely non-existent. But I suppose if uh, Chris Coleman goes in 1-0 down at half-time, he won't be unduly disappointed with that. Obviously, we'd like to be on level terms. But when you consider the uh, possession that Arsenal had in this first half, they really should be further ahead than just one goal. Henry. Oh, that was late by Raymond. This could well be the first time that Barry Knight reaches for his pocket in this first half. Not too many complaints that for the Fulham defender employed in the midfield role today. No, There's a late challenge from uh, Raymond. Henri drops the ball off into the wide area and you see... Raymond just going down the back of the legs of Henri. No attempt there to play the ball. And it's an easy decision, isn't it, for Barry, R Barry Knight, I should say, to put him in the book. Pires' free kick. Touch was off Pembridge. Raymond again. Vieira. Brought down by Fabregas. This is more its faults now. Chase for Cole. She, well, I'm not sure if he meant to leave that, but it worked out well enough for Arsenal. I can only assume there they had a late call from the keeper, Almunia. Otherwise, I think Cliche was about to bring it down on his chest. But that, that's good goalkeeping. Fabregas caught out by Pembridge, but Pires is on hand to remedy the situation. Jungberg, Henri has set off. Too far from picking him up. Henri and Pierce collide. Both down in some discomfort by the look of things. Accidental, wasn't it? The, chair, the collision between uh, Henri and Pierce. No uh, intent there. I think they both ran into one another. Arsenal have been so used to being ahead at Highbury in recent months and years that it seems to have given a rather lacklustre atmosphere here this Boxing Day. But uh, ahead they are today, and should they go on to uh, either win this game or uh, avoid defeat, which uh, would not be in the game plan of Arsene Wenger, although Chris Coleman would be very happy with that, then it will be a 30th game in a row. They are unbeaten at uh, Highbury. Well, like you were saying, Trevor, at just uh, one goal down. It's not a disaster for Fulham. There's always a way of uh, getting back into it. Jumberg and Radzinski have words down this right-hand side for Arsenal. And I'm sure there are many areas of the game that the manager would like to put right in this second half. Arsenal, certainly in midfield, have, have been dominant, and the areas where you'd expect Fulham to have been on top, or at least to have been able to, uh, to frustrate, haven't really worked out so far. No, 
Chris Corner be disappointed with the uh, amount of attacking that they've uh, they've done, or what they've not been able to do, I should say, because Almunia hasn't had a save to make. I don't think he's had a cross to take. Henri typically assured the way he brought it down and uh, breaks into attack. Clichy in support. Bergkamp and Jungberg in the centre. And Van der Sar claims. Vieira in very strongly on Radzinski. Well, he felt the ball was there to be won. It was just nicked away by the Canadian. And Vieira will become the first Arsenal caution. His sixth booking of the season so far. Just back from suspension recently. One game he missed. And that all started from a uh, throw-out from Van der Sar. He tried to uh, release Radzinski. He was quickly closed down by uh, Lauren. The ball ran loose. Radzinski just tries to nick it away from the uh, challenge from Vieira. And uh, definitely a late challenge. And uh, Radzinski really felt uh, that tackle from Vieira. It was late. And I think Mr Knight is right to brandish the yellow card. Two yellow cards then, late on in this first half. One apiece for either side. And it's the one goal as we enter the last 90 seconds of the first period. And that separates the sides. Chris Coleman has been vocal in the criticism of his players so far this season. And look, there's a way for Arsenal. He's hoping that... Uh, the January transfer window and the fact that Fulham do have money to spend in bringing in new players will spur some of the existing ones who he feels have been underperforming into action. Henri dances away from Raymond. Here's Bergkamp. Jungberg. It's a pity the cross from uh, Jungberg didn't match the run. It was a clever run, it was well picked out, got the ball under control as he just waited on the byline for a colleague to put himself into a position that he could find him with. That colleague was Vieira at the far post, but the cross from Jungberg went behind the goal. Disappointing end to what was a good build-up from Arsenal. Well, the approach stoppage time. At the end of this first half. Only two minutes to be added on. Raymond's free kick. Well, the one Achilles heel that Arsenal have had recently has been set pieces, and when Fulham have had them, in whichever area of the field, they've uh, almost invariably been disappointing so far. I don't understand why Raymond took the responsibility in taking that free kick, because he's on the halfway line, just stood two yards away from him is that night, and the further three yards away is the other centre-half, Pierce. Why Raymond wants to take it, I just don't know. He's a midfield player. Get himself forward into an area where he's going to cause a problem to Arsenal. Hooked away by Vieira from Razinski's cross. Here's Knight. Okanegra is across there. And Arsenal have dominated this first half. They certainly won't want to concede later on, but it may just happen. They were taken off the toes of Andy Cole by Campbell. Now here come Arsenal, Bergkamp. Henri, Jungberg and Pires in the centre. Pace of Henri beats Volts. Now the cunning. Cross is deep, but Fabregas is there. And a what? tame ending to a wonderful move. Exactly, I was just about to say, the ending was uh, disappointing because once again the build-up was brilliant. Henri picked out Fabregas, he showed good control, brought it down and then just lobbed the ball into the hands of van der Sar. Well, 
Well, Arsenal are ahead at half-time, but Fulham will be pleased that it's by just the one goal. It was Thierry Henry wearing number 14 on the 14th minute. The goal that equalled the league tally of Ian Wright and takes him level second in the Arsenal League goal-scoring charts. That's why Arsenal lead Fulham at half-time by one goal to nil. Shirt. No, this week. Said nothing Pristine condition it'll be in uh, Alan, the yeah. Arsenal keeper. It was a frustrating start for Coleman. They had two good opportunities. One was a corner, the second a good opportunity from a free kick to whip the ball into the danger area, and they did not. Yeah. That was on, Pembridge, on both who occasions. I just said just before yeah. we went on, that it was very good uh, delivery from Rob's, set pieces. Rob's put the Christmas cracker on him. But they really have got themselves into that situation. They've only got themselves to blame. Coley, I feel a bit sorry for because he's he's trying to make things happen. There, there he is, is there. Yeah. And, and he will he has got a good first touch mm. there's no doubt about that but as we said in in the opener mm. he, he really needs to work well with someone who's going to get in behind or at least hold the ball up and set pieces for me mcbride's got the power in the air to at least give them the opportunity Definitely, to do that yeah. yeah rob just quickly is this the, is this the one quick difference between chelsea and arsenal at the moment that, that to the sort. beating the side you should beat easily well certainly chelsea and uh, recently in the last couple of months have, have really put sides uh, very, very quickly uh, to the sword, and Arsenal haven't done that, and uh, it's probably a big difference at the moment. OK, there is the uh, match ball. Let's go back now to Highbury, 1-0 to Arsenal with our commentators Trevor Francis and Bill Leslie. Fulham to attack the clock end here at Highbury in this second half. A very cold December afternoon. Well, as Fulham look to get back into this game, they might want to ponder the record that it's been over three years now since Arsenal scored the first goal here at Highbury and went on to lose the game. Forty-five games in that time before today's match. Ishii's throw and by Moritz Volz. Touch from Pires, takes it out for another Fulham throw in. And Diop. Ishii. Vieira. Giving it back to Fulham now. Pembridge. Collins John. Moritz Fultz. Away by Campbell. And Pires now. Wonderful cushion touch by Burkamp. Radzinski was first to react to it. Not for long. This is Jungberg now. seen intent early on in the second half to cut off the Arsenal supply lines which is what you would have thought they'd have been trying to do from the start with the way they set out their formation Henry's header gives Ljungberg a chase but the height advantage was always with that Zap Knight and Arsenal have a free kick It's right on the edge of the penalty area for that high boot by Zat Knight, I presume. Uh, Camp and Henri in discussion as to exactly what they'll do with this one. Shot at goal, always a possibility. Should uh, Henri decide to go across, he has Pires, Ljungberg and Kolo Torre, as well as Sol Campbell. Runners on the far side, but he goes for goal, Henri. Was hit with bend and pace, but it was also hit with height. It's certainly got enough power on it. Absolutely drilled this in the step of his foot, but couldn't get it underneath the crossbar. And therefore doesn't cause a problem to Van der Sar. Thierry Henri, who this afternoon starts his 42nd consecutive Premiership match. A wonderfully consistent performer. In fact, if you look back over the last few seasons, he's only missed one Premiership game in the last 90. It was away last season against Leicester City. Hey, 
criticised Henri earlier on this season for uh, not being at his peak. He himself admitted he was only at something like 90% of his fitness. And he certainly looked sharp so far this afternoon. It's Knight's free kick. Attacked by Collins John. Here's Cole. That is cross away. There's a good battle between Cole and Campbell. Here's Diop. Too strong for Clichy. Diop's cross. They've eluded everyone somehow. And more promise from Fulham early on in the second. They've come out with much more determination in the second half. That was a good, strong, powerful run from Diop. Drive into the byline, got away from Cliche. But there's nobody to get on the end of his cross. Vieira. Pires. Clichy's run opens up some space, left by Henri. Bergkamp's return, didn't quite go into the path of Henri, but Arsenal still have it. Vieira, Colo Torre. And now it's Raymond who has the chase against Vieira. Torre getting back into position after his little run forward. And Arsenal are able to restore composure. It's just what Chris Coleman would have expected, probably from the off in this game. Uh, more competitive attitude from his side. He's certainly shown it so far in the opening five minutes or so of the second half. But here's Jungberg now. No flag against the runner Burkamp. He got another chance after it came back to him off that night. And eventually Arsenal will win their corner kick. They're sixth so far, their first of this second half, Arsenal. Here is his delivery, stamped away by Mark Pembridge. And here's Pembridge to collect and give a chase for Thomas Radzinski. Well, Fulham will need bodies forward, and they get it in the form of Collins John. Radzinski was unable to find him first time, but it's the return pass from the young Dutchman second time. It's Torre's challenge, which will give Fulham a free kick. There's absolutely no doubt about the uh, the challenge there, free kick. But across the opposite side of the field, Arsenal were very, very slow to get bodies back to defend that uh, counter-attack from Fulham. And if Rosinski could have released the ball a little bit earlier, they had a two-against-one situation at the far post. Be the left boot of Mark Pembridge to deliver. Another set piece test for Arsenal. Pembridge hits with pace. There's Vieira to uh, stop the passage of the ball, but he's forced to concede a corner. Pembridge's corner. The camp's touch wasn't there that first time, but recovered beautifully. Now here's Fabregas. Arsenal have two men over on the far side. Fabregas goes close, though. Pires. And if only Arsenal, for their own sakes, had been able to find Henri, then there would have been a vintage counter-attack from the home side. As it is, it's Fulham who are able to do just that. Collins John. Cole wanted it played early. Didn't get it, and the move breaks down. It's a swift counter-attack from Fulham, but a disappointing end from John. One-on-one -on -one against Sol Campbell. He's trying to actually kick the ball through the legs of Campbell. Campbell stood firm and defended the situation really well. Here's Diop. 
Hopefully she wins and Arsenal throw it. It looks like Diop has been isolated with Gail Clichy a little more in this second half. Well, certainly in the second half, Fulham have been more positive. And I don't think Arsenal will mind that too much because throughout that first half, whilst Arsenal had plenty of possession, they didn't fashion too many chances because Fulham had so many players continually behind the ball. And here's another free kick for Fulham. You feel this could be their best avenue of getting back on level terms because if the quality of the ball is better, just looking at some of the players who are coming forward, they've got plenty of size in there. People like Pierce and Diop and Raymond. It's Pembridge's kick. It was low and Pires was able to deal with it. Bocanegra saw a gap through the centre, but that's not the place to give away possession against Arsenal. Bergkamp. Jungberg is forced wide. Uncharacteristic from Arsenal. Usually they're able to go straight for the jugular from that sort of position. Yes, most certainly they should have capitalised on that. It wasn't good play from Volts. He stepped up with his hand in the air, looking to play offside. Definitely onside, but the ball, as it's been on many occasions in this game from Dennis Bergkamp. Dennis Bergkamp not at his best today. His touch hasn't been what it normally is. Collins John getting on to the pass from Andy Cole. That's great covering play from Gail Clichy. The left back over on the right hand side. Oh, so wind him up, boy. Come on. Well, in the opening ten minutes of the second half, if Arsenal needed any reminder that a one goal lead is very often not enough and they should have had it well, Mooney has come a long way that's a good claim a brave claim as well well for one moment it looked to be a disaster in the offering there as Amunia flew off his line there appeared there could have been a collision with one of his players but he got it right Pushed by Pierce in the back of Dennis Bergkamp, sees Arsenal awarded a free kick. Well, Arsenal were five points ahead of Chelsea on October the 16th in the nine games since. Arsenal have gained ten points fewer than their rivals from West London. A ten-point swing in ten games shows how little time it can take. And with 19 games remaining after today's match, there's plenty of time to make up a five-point gap, or whatever that may be at the end of today's play. Chelsea, of course, as are every Premiership side in action this Boxing Day. A full programme in the Barclays Premiership. Bergkamp's free kick. Torre is across, but couldn't get the ball back across goal. Great ball from Dennis Bergkamp. Played to the far post, Torre escaped his marker. He's got the opportunity here of heading that back across goal, but Torre gets it all wrong. He's never scored a goal here at Highbury, Colo Torre. His five for the club so far have come away. Diop. Left in a pile with Fabregas. Arsenal will play on. Fabregas has come off worse, he's still down. Jungberg caught late by Knight. Still Arsenal play on and they find Henri. His touch deserted him and Fulham can clear. I think uh, Pierce was quite thankful for that because that would have been once again a confrontation one-on-one, -on -one, Henri against Pierce. Henri came out on top when he got his goal, but his control on this occasion let him down. Bergkamp chested into the path of Pires. It's lovely from Arsenal. Can he finish it? Edwin van der Sar was out quickly. Good save that from van der Sar. Covered his near post area, made himself big. But it was difficult for Pires to squeeze that ball past him. Bergkamp now looks for Henri. Bocanegra heads clear. Fabregas now. Blocked off Knight. May just spin into the path of Bergkamp. 
Both sides are feeling for a push. As Clichy looks for Ljungberg. Zach Munt uses every inch of his six foot five inch frame to clear. Henri now. And to pass it through onto the boot of Ljungberg. But Knight again is the last line of defence for Fulham. Arsenal just starting to step it up. talked a moment ago about the dip and the swing of points between Arsenal and Chelsea since October but uh, perhaps then if you consider that it's not a surprise that Arsenal haven't won back-to-back -back games in that time this would be the first time if they can add the three points here to those they picked up at Fratton Park last weekend but the job is by no means done yet This is the opportunity that Pires had. Raymond's doing his best to get back. Pires just trying to squeeze it past Van der Sar, who remained tall and big, makes it difficult for him to get it past him. He hits his legs, but it's a very important save that Van der Sar made to keep it at 1-0. Here is Pires, appended by Bolts. Well, people talk this season about the fact that Robert Pires hasn't uh, hit the heights as he has done previously for Arsenal, but he's still joint second top scorer in the Premiership with uh, Jermaine Defoe, Andrew Johnson of Crystal Palace, player you know well, Trevor, of course, and Milan Barros. And one of the things with Pires, whenever he plays, he always gets himself into good goal-scoring positions. Not always easy from a wide area, but he shows great movement, he comes off that line, whenever he feels it's possible, and when he gets possession like he is now, he uses the ball so well. Here's Henri, slides it in for Pires, Pires across well. <laughs> Against Arsenal as a defender, you always need to expect the unexpected. And the shortest man in the penalty area was the one who won the header. What a great ball this is from uh, Henri. It's a cross, but it's a cross come pass because he knows exactly where he wants to put that. On the head of Jungberg. It takes Zach Knight by surprise. He gets under it, totally misses it. Jungberg from 12 yards can't direct the ball from Henri towards goal. Knight, that's a tremendous pass for Collins. John! Well, Arsenal very nearly caught out. Great ball, this. John gets the better of Cliché, hits it early across Almunia, but just a little bit too far outside the far post. It's a warning to Arsenal. It's their first attempt. I was about to say on target. It wasn't on target, but at least we've had an attempt from Fulham. And they've certainly been better in the second half. Bocanegra's clearance. Brought down by Cole. The error able to steal for Arsenal. Henry was offside. Here's Collins John. That's a fairly anonymous figure in the first half, but has certainly made his mark more so in the second. The 50th Premiership appearance for Morris Foltz. He sees his throw in sliced out of play by Gail Clichy. He's back in the side this afternoon, Morris Foltz, for uh, Liam Rossinha, who saw his two game run in the starting 11 come to an end. End of the match against Manchester United in the one all draw. 
and uh, one of the victims of the 2-1 defeat last time out at the Valley. Knight, another one of those searching long passes. This time, too much for Collins John. In terms of attacking options, Fulham certainly have plenty on the bench with the likes of Steve Malbronk, Brian McBride as well. Sylvain Legwinski and young Liam Fontaine. A young centre-half who spent last season on loan at Yeovil. is also among the Fulham substitutes. And there's certainly movement on the Fulham bench at the moment. But there's movement up front for Arsenal. Bergkamp. And then trying to decide what to do. He just left it open for Zat Knight to tow it away. And now here's Moritz Volz. What a glorious opportunity that was for Arsenal. Bocanegra lost possession. Arsenal quickly got players into advance area. They must have been running four on one. And really should have made better use of that situation. Pembridge now. Raymond. Radzinski. And Almunia made all the right decisions there. I don't think he did make the right decision. He got lucky there. He elected to come off his line. He was absolutely in no man's land. And really, Radzinski had a fantastic opportunity to lob that ball over him into the empty net. But he, in fact, lobbed it straight at Almunia, and he got away with it. This is the situation here. Good ball in. He looks up, sees Almunia off his line. Looks good. I suppose you could say he got it right in the end, but... I think a more clinical finisher would really have exposed Almunia as he came off his line too early, in my opinion. Here's Bergkamp now. Knight forced to concede another corner kick. Well, it's eventful at both ends at the moment. I think it's proof, though, that Arsenal cannot sit on this 1-0 lead. Fulham have been much more determined in the second half. And really, that was a glorious opportunity for Redskin, Radzinski to make them 1-1. Perez's corner. Fabregas was diving down at the feet of Pembridge, but it was the Welshman's boot that clears. And just a couple of feet from where the ball went out, we have the first substitution of the afternoon. Brian McBride will be introduced, and Andy Cole who uh, hasn't exactly set Hybre light on his return to his former stomping ground, makes way. Never easy, though, is it, to play that lone striking role. And he was left very much isolated for much of that first half. And for the second half of this second half, it'll be Brian McBride who plays that lone striking role. Clichy, a curious ball, and Arsenal get away with it as Radzinski fails to control. Radzinski again from McBride, closed out by Vieira. Lauren, lovely ball for Henri, tried the back heel, again it was that night. And Van der Sar passes it out of play on this right-hand side. It must be about the fourth occasion there that Omri has tried that little back heel. And I have to say, it's the fourth occasion he's got it wrong. But it was a great run, absolutely nothing wrong with the run. Well picked out from Lauren. Camel, Henri. Here's Fabregas. Lauren. Vieira's made the run, Henri looked to play it into his path, but again it's that night. He was making some very important interceptions for Fulham. Radzinski now. Collins John. Volts is well forward. 
strongly away by Campbell. Into the stride of Perez. He'll leave it for Ljungberg. Fabregas, Henri. Now Perez, beautifully set up by Thierry Henri. Now can Arsenal finish this one? Back to Henri. Oh, back off the post. So nearly. And Henri wants Highbury to get behind the side. Well, that would have been one of the goals of the season. Fantastic ball initially from Henri to Perez. Then Perez plays the compliment back with a great ball to Henri, who smashes it against the post. Perez tried to do the same for Vieira. And it's that night again. Henri's request has been heeded. There's more noise around Highbury as McBride for Fulham finds Pembridge. Well, the shot from Henri came in that quickly. I couldn't detect whether it hit the crossbar or the post, but it wasn't just the shot, it was the initial pass from Henri. He was facing one way, but picked out Perez, knew exactly where he was. Just look at this. He's looking one way, flicks it up, then plays it back to where it's come from for Perez. Absolutely brilliant vision from Thierry Henry. Knight. This time the flag is up against the run of Collins, John. Well, 1-0 was sufficient for Arsenal last time out. Will it be enough for them today? Fabregas. It's Volts' his header. Now Radzinski. And this is Perez for Burkamp. Saved by Van der Sar. And a good save it was too. Once again, low down, hits his feet. Doesn't matter how you stop them, as long as you keep them at the back of the net. And Van der Sar has done that really well. Jungberg now. Burkamp leaves it for Perez. And Arsenal have two. Well, it's been coming, but it's another great goal from Robert Perez. His tenth in the league this season, and Arsenal now surely have three Boxing Day points to add to their tally. Well, the last five minutes of the game, Robert Perez has been really influential, and he gets a deserved goal. Could have shot there, comes back outside of Volts. Van der Sar does his best, he comes off his line really quickly to narrow the angle, but Perez gets the ball under control with his left foot. Smashes it into the back of the net to put Arsenal two up. His third goal against Fulham in seven games. And Robert Perez moves into double figures for the season. Camp. Henri. Arsenal aren't finished yet. Pires. Henri again. Bergkamp. Wonderful first touch. Ljungberg. Bergkamp now. Well, he drilled it more in hope than anything else, and it very nearly came off for Arsenal. Two midfield giants collide, and Vieira needs to be careful, he's already been booked. Fortunately for him, he didn't make any contact with Raymond, who's continued his run forward. This is Volts now. 
I think he may have made contact actually with, with Raymond, but I think Raymond did Vieira a favour because if he had gone to ground, then I just wonder what the referee's action would have been. Barry Knight was very close at hand, but uh, didn't have to make a decision because of the fact that Raymond continued with the ball at his feet. Well, the goal came at a perfect time for Arsenal, just after the 70-minute mark. There's just a little bit of unease creeping in as Fulham threatened that little bit more. And well, Al Munia's goal. But uh, the two-goal cushion should be sufficient for the champions. Fabregas, there camped, and Henri has a red wave flowing up the field. Vieira at the head of it, Henri out on this left. Needed a touch off anyone, Clichy. Bergkamp, Vieira, but denied by Pierce. Nearly fell for Pires. Collins John. She always the favourite to get there ahead of Volts. Diop. Bocanegra. And Arsenal are ready to make their first change. Mathieu Flamini will come on for Freddy Ljungberg, who's missed the last couple of games, suffering from uh, intense headaches. Well, he's back and will be rested for the further trials and tribulations of this busy festive period. And on will come Mathieu Flamini. Tenth Premiership appearance of the season. His eighth as a substitute, Mathieu Flamini. Flamini is a natural central midfield player, but he's taken the place of Youngberg on the right-hand side of midfield to keep the balance. And uh, Pennant's just gone to sit down, another of the subs. I would think he's slightly disappointed about the fact that he's not been brought on the right of midfield to replace Youngberg. Well, the rumours grow that Pennant will be leaving Highbury in the uh, transfer window next month. He's out of contract in the summer. This was to be the season where he was given the final chance to prove himself, but he's really had too many games in the first team in which to do that. Injury hasn't helped, of course. He's on his way back now from a hamstring problem. And Arsenal may well decide to take what money they can get for him. We even talked today that Spurs may have been interested in taking him across North London. it to bounce, then he gives himself a problem. Pembridge. <laughs> It'll be a Dutch switch now for Arsenal as they continue to rotate. Dennis Bergkamp making way for Robin van Persie. The switch was the other way round at Fratton Park last weekend with Van Persie starting and Bergkamp come on and coming on to replace him. Here's Van Persie for the closing stages 
of this match. McBride, back to Ian Pearce. coming so thick and fast it's uh, no doubt the case that Arsene Wenger would like to be able to uh, take the foot off the gas in the closing stages of games as much as possible the two goal cushion has allowed him to do that a bit but Fulham aren't finished yet stinging cross in from McBride has earned him a corner yes if it wasn't for the fact that Campbell had taken up a good position defensive position then the cross would have been even better from McBride as it is it's another Pembridge corner. Well away by Vieira. It makes such a difference when he's in the side, defending those set pieces. Half of Arsenal's goals this season have been conceded from set piece situations. And probably not a coincidence that the two Brazilians, Edu and Gilberto, also an important part of their defensive setup. Both very good in the air, both missing for large parts of this season. into the last 10 minutes. Well, Stig Malbronk is preparing for action. Big decision by Chris Coleman to drop Steve Malbronk and Sylvain Leguinsky today. He clearly wanted to give out a message to the so-called established players that no one's place could be taken for granted. And as it is, it hasn't worked out and conceding a goal. Superbly taken, though, it was by Thierry Henry in the first quarter of an hour. Well, it's been an uphill task for Fulham ever since then. Percy. Still, it's Van Percy. Shows too much to Ian Pierce. Malbronk. Bolts. Diop. Malbronk, on the end of Collins John's header. Gladzinski. It was Lauren's header. Now Lunia came and didn't get anywhere near it. No, it was a testing cross by Radzinski. But Almunia, he did come for it, shouldn't have come for it. It was, it was played in to a difficult area with plenty of pace. And he was never going to get anywhere near it. Here's Radzinski. Oh, it nearly finds its way through to Collins John. It will be on Sol Campbell from the touch from the Canadian. And also being a little bit careless. Can Fulham take advantage? The Fulham fans appeal for a penalty. There was never any hint of that. In frustration, Bolts has fouled Flemini in the corner. Late challenge, seen two or three in, the, in this game, and uh, the result of them has been quite predictable. Yellow card, he's had a good game, hasn't he, Barry Knight? 
Not a difficult game, my ad. But he's got most things right. His third booking, Barry Knight. One of them for Arthur Knight. Here's captain Patrick Vieira. Two for Fulham. Bolts the second of those, joining Zesh Raymond. Here's Henri. Again, hooked it round the corner beautifully, but then Percy wasn't quite aware of where it was going. It's always hard. It was hit straight at his back. Another example there of the uh, awareness of Henri. I spoke earlier about the pass that he uh, played for Perez. That one there to Van Percy. Perhaps not, not quite as good, but still absolutely superb bit of vision. Oh, barring a miracle, Arsenal will equal their own club record of 30 games at home unbeaten. Also, move into the 30s in terms of London derbies unbeaten. It's been said often in the past that as a club from the capital, it's always harder to win the championship because of the number of London derbies you have to play, but Arsenal have only dropped points this season in London derbies to Crystal Palace away and here against Chelsea. And it uh, doesn't look like they will here against Fulham. To go back to November 2001, to uh, the visit of Charlton here for the last time that Arsenal tasted defeat in a uh, tussle with a fellow club from the capital. Brzezinski's had it, straight to Almunia. Bonnery. Pires. Clichy. Bolt's just got a stud on the ball to ensure that Thierry Henry wasn't able to break clear. It's been another wonderful afternoon for Thierry Henry, scoring the first very nearly scoring a spectacular second for himself denied only by the woodwork after a wonderful trademark Arsenal move here's Van Persie no foul might be on Pires Bocanegra Malbron Collins John. That's really just a question of playing down the clock now in these closing minutes. Unless Fulham can make something of this free kick. They're sending all the big guys forward, as you would expect. The two centre halves have gone in there. And they're now dependent on a good quality ball in that box from the left foot of Mark Pembridge. Too close to Almunia. He thinks about throwing quickly for Pires. It's a more measured approach from the Spaniard. Doesn't seem to pay too many dividends. Van der Sar. Mel Bronk. Back to Van der Sar. Worked well enough, but didn't look altogether comfortable. I have to agree with you. It looked uh, very, very convincing what they did then, but, um, you know, it, it finished well, but it could have been a, a nasty situation developing there for Fulham. Here's Pembridge. Yeah. Well, Torre prevents the corner. Well, it was Radzinski who probably had Fulham's best opportunity. The ball fell to him. Almunia rushed off his goal line. Radzinski went for the lob. Uh, lobbed it straight into the arms of the Arsenal keeper. Yes, the execution, nothing wrong with it. It was the right technique, but he just didn't put enough on it. He needed to get it a bit higher to avoid the, uh, the extended arms from uh, Almunia as he came off his line, because the goal was totally empty. 
Well, Chris Coleman and Fulham can contemplate a uh, worrying run, an 11th defeat this season. Before today, no side had lost more than them. Palace and West Bromwich Albion and also lost 10. And when you're there or thereabouts at Christmas, it tends to be a long second half of the season. Flamini can have guided out of play. It's his compatriot, Steve Malbrook. And the seconds continue to tick on. It'll be eight defeats in 12 games for Fulham. Ten points for a, from a possible 37. And the warning signs have been flashing long before today. But Chris Coleman will know that... Uh, Changes will certainly be needed in the second half of the season. Two absolutely crucial games up and coming as well, both at home, but against Birmingham City and against Crystal Palace as well. And then following that, it's uh, away to Southampton. Those are the remaining three of this busy, festive period, but all absolutely vital against sides down with them, Birmingham, Crystal Palace and Southampton. Yes, they would have probably looked at the uh, the calendar of the uh, Christmas and New Year period, looked at this game and thought, we're not going to get anything from this. But from those three you mentioned, Bill, they should get plenty of points. As for Arsenal, obviously focused on the other end of the table. Yeah. Interesting trip up to Newcastle United is next up for them. Then they go to Charlton Athletic. And then have Manchester City here at home before the FA Cup kicks in at the start of January. Here's Van Persie. Lovely quick feet from the Dutchman. <laughs> We're into time added on, and there'll be two minutes of that at the end of this match. Fulham's wretched run against Arsenal continues. Yet to beat them in the Premiership. And no repeat of last year's heroics here, the rearguard action. That saw Arsenal held by Chris Coleman's side. Radzinski, Arsenal will be keen to keep up the recent tight defensive record that they've managed. This will be a third clean sheet in four Premiership outings. Just been the two worrying moments in the game, the one that we spoke about when Radzinski should have lobbed it over the advance in uh, Almunia, and then Collins John got in behind Cliche, but put his shot beyond the far post. Apart from that, it's not been too much to disturb the Arsenal back four. Carlos Bocanegra. And Arsenal have done it, exactly what they needed. They've done their job at the top of the table, winning back-to-back -back Premiership games for the first time since October. Robert Pires with the second, his tenth of the season in the Premiership. And Thierry Henry equaling the record of Ian Wright as the second all-time scorer. A good day for Arsenal, but for Fulham, well, they know that it's going to be a long second half of the season for them. An 11th Premiership defeat, losing here at Highbury by two goals to nil.